So this is it, the first foldable from Google and at first glance it does everything right. But I took a closer look and there are many little inconsistencies that make me doubt whether it's worth its high price tag. The Pixel Fold is expensive, it looks expensive and it feels expensive. This tiny block has a premium vibe and it's certainly due to the weight. 283 grams, that's almost 3 bars of chocolate or one vegetable onion? The Pixel 7 Pro weighs about 70 grams less, that's two Pixel watches. Pretty much the heaviest smartphone I ever owned, although it is the thinnest foldable yet, both when it's opened and closed. My arms will get used to the weight and will get stronger, but my belt has suffered. But that aside, I am a fan of the design. It's ultra high quality, super durable, even water resistant for 30 minutes at one and a half meters depth and I love the matte back made out of Gorilla Glass Victus. The surface is so nice and soft that you can hardly see any fingerprints on the black model and none at all on the white model. Any future Google product should have this. The shape of the Pixel Fold is quite short but wide. It's like a small notebook. The display is only 5.8 inch, so even smaller than the iPhone 14 Pro or Galaxy S23. I could reach the top with my thumb and writing was much more comfortable than on the Galaxy Fold because of the width. There I also noticed the vibration motor in a positive way. I like that the corners are very round and also found the Full HD Plus resolution to be more than enough for the size. The display has up to 120 Hz and an above average brightness of 1200 nits. The peak brightness in HDR content is even 1550 nits. The only thing that bothers me is somewhat the thick edge on the left and that the volume rocker and fingerprint sensor are similarly long and altogether placed far too low. I often confused them in the first days. At least the sensor is fast and reliable. Just like the other Pixel smartphones, the cameras on the back are recessed in a white metal bar. This protects the lenses, ensures that the device will not wobble on a table and has a high recognition value. Google keeps saying that this is the most robust foldable smartphone on the market and I take their word for it. You can really feel it. The folding mechanism does not wobble a micrometer. The resistance is nice and even and when the Pixel Fold is closed it makes a nice, rich and full like a heavy, expensive car door. I could listen to that all day long. The hinge has a few special features. First, it's stainless steel and the rest of the body is aluminium. Second, it closes perfectly flat but does not open perfectly flat. You have to apply some force for the last 2% or so. Only then the pixel fold is straight. The hinge is not under the display like everywhere else it is next to it. That's why the display has a rather thick bezel on the inside, at the top and the bottom. If you put it next to a Galaxy Fold, it looks really stupid, especially in portrait mode, and I don't want to talk that up. But Google had some good reasons for this decision. Because the folding mechanism is next to the display, the Pixel Fold can be super thin and yet robust. The selfie camera is not in the display, but in the frame, and the battery is surprisingly large, but more on that in just a moment. For now I want to talk about the bendable 7.6 inch OLED display. The aspect ratio is slightly wider than twice the outer display side by side. That's why you can comfortably use two apps next to each other. You do have black bars in videos, but not quite as thick as Samsung. The crease in the center is also more subtle than on Samsung, but you can still see and feel it. I quickly got used to it, but I was still hoping that Google would make it nicer. Because foldable displays are made out of plastic, they can't break, but they scratch more easily. Some people worry about scratches on the inside screen, but they are not justified in my opinion. The display is well protected on the inside, but I do have scratches everywhere Everywhere else, on the frame, on the camera and even the display on the outside. The resolution of the display is sufficiently high and somewhere between the Pixel 7 Pro and Pixel Tablet with 378 ppi. The brightness is solid with 1000 nits full screen and 1450 nits peak. You can work more productive on such a large display than on a regular smartphone, but you can also play better games with it. The loud and clear stereo speakers contribute to that positively. Everything is powered by Google's own Pro processor, the Tensor G2, 
and its strengths are not shown inside of a benchmark, but rather in day-to-day -day performance. Speech recognition, for example, is faster and more accurate than everywhere else. The magic eraser removes people and objects from photos on demand and blurred photos can be de-blurred. I did like the Tensor G2 in the Pixel 7a and Pixel tablet. In the Pixel Fold, however, well, it's now 9 months old. Soon Tensor G3 will be announced and I think it would have been a stroke of a genius from Google to put in the next generation Tensor in their most expensive and most modern smartphone. But it is what it is, with 12GB of RAM on the side, the Tensor G2 is anything but slow. The software is super smooth and fast, apps stay open forever, 120Hz can be held throughout, switching from the inside to the outside happens without loading times. The Pixel Fold flew through everything I put it through. The storage is at least 256GB but unfortunately still UFS 3.1 and not the faster, more efficient 4.0 technology. Sometimes I'm asked, well, Killian, what exactly are the benefits of a folding phone? And they are free in my opinion. First one being, you have a big phone in a small form factor. Second, you can put it down for video calls, for taking pictures, or if you want to watch a series. And third, there are special software features. With the Pixel Fold, I immediately have to think about the dock that holds your most important apps and you can switch between them quickly and drag them next to each other. This works great and you can even drag content from one app to another. For YouTube and Netflix, videos are automatically pushed to the upper half of the display when half folded. And the keyboard is split into two to make it easier to reach each letter. But there's also a big problem. Many apps don't adjust to the wide aspect ratio and have big, thick black bars. You can slide them from left to right, but you cannot enlarge them. Often they do work full format in portrait mode, but not always. And it's super unfortunate that Google does not include an option like Samsung that forces the apps to expand, because that works pretty well on the Galaxy Fold and it's definitely better than Google's solution. I hope this changes soon with one of the Pixel feature drops or one of the three years of Android updates or the up to five years of security updates. And this is pure Android after all. I love it. It's beautiful, it's intuitive, it's fast, but it is not yet well optimized for folding phones. You can definitely see that Samsung has more experience in that regard. The battery is 4821 mAh, which is quite a bit bigger than the Fold 4, although the Pixel Fold is smaller. The reason for this is again the folding mechanism. Still, I had some concerns about the battery life. Tensor G2 is not as efficient as the Snapdragon 8 Plus Gen 1 or even Gen 2. In my everyday life, which includes a lot of camera use, 5G, high display brightness and automatic switching between dark and light mode, four and a half to five and a half hours of screen on time were possible. This is not far away from the Pixel 7 Pro and comparable to the Galaxy Fold 4. If only in Wi-Fi, I could think about six to seven hours of screen use. Charging is done wirelessly or with an optional 30 watt plug. In both cases, it takes far too long. Google finally needs to work on fast charging. One of the reasons why I was looking forward to a foldable smartphone from Google is the camera. Currently, folding smartphones lag behind regular smartphones in terms of camera performance. And it seems like Google put in the Pixel 7 Pro cameras into the Pixel Fold, but that's not the case. It is a totally different set of sensors. The main camera has 48 megapixel, an f1.7 aperture, and a sensor area that is half an inch. So about 35% smaller than in the Pixel 7. But all the magic comes from Google's software anyway. And so the pictures look exactly what you would expect from a Pixel smartphone. They are vibrant, they are crisp and they are always exposed just right. Skin tones are accurately captured. The Pixel 7 is a bit better in terms of sharpness, smoother contrast and night mode shutter speed but that's only noticeable in direct comparison. Interestingly, the Pixel Fold crops the image quite aggressively when open so that you have a landscape photo there as well, even though you are technically holding the camera in portrait mode. That can be disabled though, and I would do it because you clearly lose some sharpness. Same applies for videos. That way they are only in Full HD instead of 4K. A maximum of 60 FPS is possible, and beside the iPhone, Google makes the best videos in smartphones in my eyes. Very 
very nice stabilization, neutral colors and HDR is also available. The ultra wide angle is very comparable to the Pixel 7. It has one megapixel less resolution and unfortunately no autofocus and therefore no macro mode. Otherwise, it can keep up with the main camera in terms of color, dynamic range and sharpness. The third camera is a five times lossless periscope zoom. The fact that they could fit that into an ultra thin phone like this is honestly impressive. I often shoot with the telephoto camera on my Pixel 7 Pro and I'm happy to report that the Pixel Fold takes equally high quality pictures in bright light. When it gets a little bit dark or you zoom in 10 times, the Pixel 7 Pro is a tad sharper and lower in noise, but that's hardly worth mentioning. So it's fair to say that this is the best telephoto camera in a foldable smartphone. There's a selfie camera on the outside and one on the inside and both use different sensors resolutions and apertures, yet they look virtually identical. Neither has an autofocus, unfortunately, and the focus point is placed too far back for my taste. However, you can simply use the main camera for selfies and they look just great. Conclusion. This is the first folding phone from Google and it makes a lot of things right from the start. There's a great form factor, great performance, great build quality, great cameras, and it is the biggest and smallest pixel all at once and that's the magic of a folding phone but it also has some problems some smaller stuff and some bigger stuff there are two things that come to mind here first the apps are not well optimized and second it's quite heavy and the price is high it's 1900 euros here in europe that's so so expensive it's 1000 euros more expensive than the pixel 7 pro and I'm not sure whether that is justified. I would wait until the price drops like it did on the Fold 4 from Samsung. It's now 600 euros cheaper. And then maybe then you can buy it or you should wait for the next generation because I'm sure Google will learn a lot of stuff from this device and it's a great time to be alive. Well, Google finally has a folding phone. <laughs> That's it from me. See you in the next one. Bye.